you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for. It was a great, great, great weekend. So let's get to some of the other results. I want to start actually not on Saturday, but on Friday night, as we talk, you know where I'm going. I'm not talking Memphis Tulane, baby. I'm talking, of course, about Stanford at Colorado. Colorado's an 11 and 11 and a half point favorite. And I'll be honest. So so for people who don't know, I live on the West Coast. So it was a little bit of a late start, but seven o'clock local time kickoff. And I think even those of you on the East Coast, you're kind of hoping, okay, Colorado gets up by a big amount. Uh, they put the game away. I can get to bed early. And I'm thinking here, living on the West Coast, I'm tired. It's Friday. I got a big Saturday. Eh, maybe they'll get up by a big, big margin. I could be asleep by 930 Pacific time. Well, it appeared to be that way for a while as Colorado jumped out to a 29 to nothing lead to start the game. You feel good. Should I turn it off? Should I go to bed? And then all of a sudden, Stanford just starts chipping away and chipping away and chipping away. And all of a sudden, it's getting closer. And all of a sudden, it's getting closer. And all of a sudden, dumb stuff is starting to happen. And all of a sudden, you got yourself a game that is going to overtime where Stanford ends up winning 43 to 42. And so credit to Stanford, but the story is obviously Colorado. I want to talk about the ramifications, Coach Prime, who's to blame, all that good stuff. But let me start by saying this. This is a very tough loss for Colorado. I've said from the beginning, the goal should be get to six and six, get to a bowl game, get those extra practices, and then recruit your butt off in the offseason, okay? And so I bring it up because you win this game. You're sitting at five and two. You go into the bye. You get a week off. You feel good, all that. Now, all of a sudden, you're four and three. You lose this game, and the back half of the schedule remains really tough. UCLA, who you play out of the bye, is ranked. Washington State isn't, but they're very good. Oregon State is very good. Utah is very good. And you got to win two more games to get bowl eligible, and it is simply not going to be easy. By the way, you still play Arizona, who just beat uh, uh, Washington State, which we'll get into in a minute. But I bring it up because obviously it's a crushing loss, and I think when something happens, especially at Colorado, biggest story in the sport probably, the big question, oh, blame Coach Prime. And, and we all know what the narrative is, right? Oh, you in the media, you guys in the media, girls in the media, you spend too much time talking about them. Most overrated program in college football. Well, they're not the most overrated program in college football. They were projected to win three games. They've won four, so they've exceeded expectations. But coming out of that game, I think the question becomes, you blow a 29 to nothing lead, blame Coach Prime. And to me, it's actually the exact opposite. I watched that game. I consumed that game. I thought about that game. I think there's a lot of blame to go around, but I'm not sure much of it goes to Coach Prime because ultimately, while he is the head coach, if you look and you listen, he's been telling you for a while that something like this could happen. So let me explain. First of all, in terms of blowing a 29 nothing lead, it is an across-the-board deal, and yes, some of it falls on the head coach. But Coach Prime, as we know, is what they call a CEO head coach. He delegates the offense and the defense to the coordinators. No different than Jim Harbaugh, no different than Dabo Sweeney, et cetera, et cetera. Why do I bring it up? I thought it was a colossal disaster from both coordinators, okay? Sean Lewis, offensive coordinator, did not have a great game a few weeks ago against USC late in that game with the clock management. They put up 41 points, whatever. I bring it up because just think about that Colorado offense on Saturday, okay? I'm just going to read you the drive charts from the first half against Stanford on Friday night. Here is how the, the here is how Colorado's t uh, possessions went in the first half. Touchdown, 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 miss field goal. That was the entire first half. Four touchdowns and a miss field goal, okay? So you can't tell me that they weren't moving the ball. And then all of a sudden in the second half, they can't do anything. Here are the drive charts from uh, from Colorado in the second half. Remember, touchdown, 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 miss, P miss field goal. That was the first half. Here is the second half for Colorado. Turnover on downs, punt on, on five plays, punt on three plays, turnover on downs, touchdown, punt before overtime. So that's three punts, two, uh, two three and outs, and overall the offense just collapsed. And I'm not saying it's one person. I'm not saying it's whatever. But when you put up 29 points in the first half and you can only muster seven in the second half, 
part of that credit Stanford's defense. I'm not trying to discredit them. But part of it is play calling was not there. You're moving the ball. You got weapons. You got dudes. Xavier Weaver is getting open on every deep ball. Why do you stop throwing the ball to him? I do not understand. Beyond that, the defense is an abomination, okay? And it's not all on one guy. But Charles Kelly is the defensive coordinator. This defense is not good. And I'm sorry. I understand that it's a lot of new players in the portal, and you have guys like Travis Hunter hurt. This defense should not be this bad, okay? You look across the board at the players that they have. And even if you acknowledge that there's just not as much depth and as much talent as most of the teams they play, there is as much depth and there is as much talent as Stanford, especially on the other side of the ball. It's not just, you know, Travis Hunter, but the other corner, Jaquez Robinson played at Alabama, Levante Bentley defensive uh, or, or linebacker played at Clemson. They got a couple guys from Florida state. Jordan Dominic was dominant at Arkansas last year. So they shouldn't be this bad. And here was the other thing on Friday night, they were simply poorly coached. Okay. You can't listen. I, I'm not a scheme guy. I'm not X's and O's expert, but when they ran the same slant play over and over and over and over and over again, that's on the defensive coordinator for not adjusting. Now, should Coach Prime get on the headset? Absolutely. But that's why the defensive coordinators paid a lot of money to figure it the you-know-what out to get it figured out. Finally, I think some of this is on the players. Listen, 17 penalties in that game. And I know, again, blame the coach, head coach. It's all on the head coach. Okay, I get it. But listen to what Coach Prime has said time and time and time again over the last couple of weeks. If you listen to his messaging, one thing I respect about him, like all the great coaches, and I believe Coach Prime will get there, he just tells you how it is 24 hours a day. Nick Saban, you know when he's happy, you know when he's sad, you know when he's angry, you know when he's disappointed. Hugh Freeze, I keep saying it. Hugh Freeze tells you exactly how he feels. He told you on, in his Monday press conference, we don't have a chance to stop LSU on Saturday. Well, guess what happened? LSU put up 48 points, okay? Well, Coach Prime has been saying for weeks, guys, you're not locked in. Focus. Before the Oregon game, it was make sure you have your brothers back by your side. It doesn't go well. Credits Oregon after that game. After that, the Arizona State game, what was the conversation? Well, first of all, the USC game, he was proud, obviously, because they battled back. The Arizona State game, what did he say? We played like hot garbage. We need to be better. He set the standard, and the players did not meet it. And then after this game, I had no problem with his messaging. Did you hear what he said after this game? He said, I got a bunch of guys in that locker room that like football. I need guys that love football because right now these guys are not dedicating themselves the way that they need to to operate at the highest level and so you can blame the coach but some of this is on the guys in the locker room first of all 17 penalties is unacceptable and don't tell me it's the coach at the end of the day guys have to be accountable for their own actions on the field whether it's false starts late hits offsides whatever be accountable and don't tell me it's all on the coach because guess what you know who was one of the most penalized teams in college football last year it was Alabama with Will Anderson, the number three overall pick Dallas Turner was a top 10 pick this year. They could not stop making mistakes. And Nick Saban said all year, I, I, I don't know what to do. We've tried every single thing and nothing's working. And that's clearly where coach prime is in this situation. And so I get that it's easy to place the blame on him, but some of it is on the players too. I just think watching from a distance, a lot of these guys have bought into the we're social media stars, we're Instagram stars, we're football stars, and they haven't accomplished anything on the field yet, anything close to, 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 to what you know they believe. I don't even know how to say it, okay? I would say the best way that I can probably put it. I saw LeVar Arrington works at Fox Sports Radio, former you know superstar linebacker, NFL, Penn State, whatever. I saw that he said this. I haven't listened to the whole segment. But he said something to the effect of, there's a lot of guys on the Colorado roster that think because they play for Deion Sanders that they have accomplished what Deion Sanders has. And that's what I see from this Colorado team. I see all the hype and the excitement and the Instagram posts and the posing and the, you know, walking out with the t-shirts and the locker and the this and the that. Are, are the guys putting in the work though? So to me, Coach Prime has been telling you exactly how this is and exactly how it's going and what needs to be fixed. And these guys aren't listening. Good news is you got to buy, rally, the schedule is not easy, but it's not impossible either. UCLA right now is really struggling to move the football. Um, their defense is great, but they're struggling to move the football. 
They can be beaten at the Rose Bowl, and I guarantee you in L.A. there's going to be a lot of Colorado fans, a lot of Coach Prime fans in that game. Washington State's kind of the opposite. They're moving the ball, but they can't stop anybody right now. Arizona playing well. Oregon State's playing well. Utah, I think, is, you know, it's it's a tough matchup. But I'm disappointed, but I don't place this one on Coach Prime. He's been telling us for weeks, guys, you need to lock in. You need to focus. I don't know what else he can do. I don't know what else he can do, but that was a debacle. And I think there's a lot of blame to go around. And I don't think it's just the head football coach. 